Hey bitches. Hey bitches. I'm Joey. I'm Ashley. And welcome to One Time Mystery. 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 What a mystery. <laughs> <laughs> hey mung beans. So it turns out that this is probably going to become a thing. Sorry about it. And things need names. So please jump over to our Instagram, drop a comment on a post, doesn't matter which one, send us a DM, anything with your ideas of what some good names may be for these little mini paranormal episodes, if you will. And I'm absolutely open to dumb things too. Doesn't mean I'll use it, but any ideas are good ideas. Thank you very much. And back to you. Also, if you don't use Instagram, I understand that not everyone is up with the 411. I don't know what that means, but it sounded right. You can send us an email uh, to one time mysteries at gmail.com and we will make sure to read that and maybe take it under advisement at least. Anyway, 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 this week we are talking about the haunting of Jackie Hernandez, also known as the San Pedro haunting. So grab your nips and steady your hips. This one is a little spooky. I introduce you to Jackie Hernandez, a mother of one and a half and in a marriage that made cyanide pills look like a viable option. Deciding that she had enough of his shit, she packed up and moved into the only property she could afford, a drab turn-of-the-century bungalow in San Pedro with her two-year-old son Jamie in tow. People may think that things can only get better once you leave a bad relationship, but unfortunately for Jackie, this was not the case, as she was about to get a serving of some real paranormal doo-doo. You see, Jackie was about to make two new friends, and I can't say that they were the type of friends that you wanted, you dig. At least one of them was benign, and Jackie claims that he led her to his grave, which was 13 blocks from the bungalow which she alleges he used to live at before he died in 1913. No. It is said that spirits require energy in order to manifest activity, be it something as innocent as moving a glass on a countertop to a full-bodied apparition or touching someone maliciously or otherwise. Jackie stated that they would use her fear as energy and the more scared she became, the stronger they got. No, no thank you, I don't want it. Jackie recalls getting up one night to check on her children and sitting in the corner of their room, staring right back at her, was a haggard old man, wearing a lumberjack flannel shirt and denim suspenders. She said his eyes were glowing and they were emotionless. Listen, lady, maybe he just took his Xanax. Don't be rude. She ran to her neighbor, Susan, who ended up calming her down, and Jackie relayed the frightening encounter to her. Strangely enough, Susan didn't think that Jackie was Jat's crackers and suggested that she contact a paranormal investigator. Sounds smart to me. Spoiler alert, it does only last for three years, thank fuck, because what a nightmare. Anyway, paranormal investigators would come to witness these events firsthand, and one such investigator, Dr. Barry Taff and his crew, would get a little more than they bargained for. Armed with a small team of two cameramen, Jeff Wheatcraft and Barry Conrad, they entered the home where they were greeted by a foul smell that they could not find the source to. Sound familiar? There was loud banging coming from the attic, followed by an even louder thud, and Jackie tracked it down and found it was coming from the ceiling. In the kitchen, if you will. Bitch, you got some big ass rats. Got some big ass rats. Wishful thinking. She explained on some occasions she would see severed heads accompanied by muffled voices. Oh, come on, Jackie. Your voice would be muffled too if you had your head lopped off. I digress. She went on to say that she had been the target of random objects that had been thrown from an unseen force and even told them about the gross, stinky, blood-like liquid that sometimes would seep from the walls. Spoiler alert, kiddies, they actually captured this on film too. And side note, and don't get me wrong, I totally believe in hauntings, but I also know that bees can build hives in like your roof and stuff. And um, sometimes honey will like drip down from the ceiling, which is kind of cool and kind of gross. Like, I'm not saying that that's what this was, but I just want to acknowledge that I said it. Okay, cool. Anyway, two of these little lovebirds went into the attic pour une soirée romantique, 
Just kidding. They actually went up there to document everything. And wouldn't you bloody know it, Wheatcraft was attacked by an unseen force that threw his camera out of his hand and pushed him. After this, they wrapped things up for the night. Probably the only smart thing they did. And then they decided that they would come back later. So dumb. On their next visit, because apparently once you pop, you can't stop, they decided that yet again, they would go into the attic because dumb, where the entity had more than just playground tactics on its mind. Again, Wheatcraft, I guess old ghosty had a type, huh? Would find himself the target of an attack when a cord was wrapped around his neck, a cord that was being yanked towards one of the ceiling beams. Don't believe me? Well, you're gonna have to suck an egg because it was caught on camera, bitch. Conrad, who was startled by the commotion, snapped a photo in Jeff's direction. I mean, I'm glad he did because that was great evidence, but like also, how about you put your camera down and help a brother out? Maybe, I don't know. While no one was filming up there, they did capture some really good footage of Wheatcraft being lowered from the manhole. The color was drained from his face and the rope was still wrapped around his neck. Hell no. Hell no, it's off the fuck I go. After giving his account to what had taken place, he left that house and would never return there ever again. And I don't blame him. Jackie eventually moved back in with her husband and soon enough discovered that the nightmare wasn't quite over yet. One night while helping a neighbor move a TV into her shed, she saw the TV screen flicker and the image of the old haggard man from San Pedro was staring back at her once more. She contacted Dr. Taff and his crew again, which you would have thought had learned their lessons by this point, but no, I guess they, they hadn't. During their visit, they did a seance and Jackie got to speak to the spirit who told them he had been murdered on San Pedro Harbor. They were also told that Wheatcraft was attacked because he resembled the man who had killed him. During this event, no one was physically harmed. However, Wheatcraft would end up suffering from paranoia from all of the events. And honestly, I am not surprised. Actually, I am surprised that he didn't suffer with more than just that because that is some traumatic shit. And that was the haunting of Jackie Hernandez. Now, there is more that I could have gone into, but I just felt like it didn't really add to the story. Well, I mean, it added to the story at a time to the story, but we want to keep these ones little. So I really hope you liked it, and hopefully there'll be more of them in the future because they are quite fun to research and to record. So don't forget to send us some ideas and maybe we'll do a poll on Instagram to find out which one we should use. I don't know, might be fun. Anyway, don't forget to follow us on Spotify, Instagram, and TikTok by searching for One Time Mysteries. And you can send us an email at onetimemysteries at gmail.com if you're so inclined. And with that said, I hope you have a spectacular evening. We love you. Goodbye.